All right, not much intro today. Straight to fishing. We're throwing the Kalisa. It's a tournament day. I'll explain more about what's going on, but the tournament has started. Fishing code is, code is kindness. And I'm determined to get the first fish of the tournament here. We're fishing, it's right at seven o'clock. The tournament just started. I feel like this first couple hours are gonna be key. So I think this is when we have the best chance of catching. We can catch them all day, but usually the best times are right early in the morning, right when the sun, before the sun's even come up. So I'm gonna get out here and get some casts in before I start talking to the camera. Oh, there we go. There's one. There's one. First one of the day. I almost saw that one hit it. Saw a big flash in the water. Right when this one popped the Kalisa. Get up here. Look at that fish. First perch of the day. Haha, <laughs> I knew. I've only been fishing for about five minutes. I knew this early morning deal would be the best, but I gotta get my credentials in and submit this fish. I'll talk about the requirements in a bit, but I wanna get this fish back in and submit it real quick so that it stays nice and healthy. Let's just drop my rod. Entry number one, fresh caught on the Kalisa. There's the measuring tape, zero all the way to the end. I give it 14 and a quarter, but you can give it whatever you want. 14, 14 and a quarter. There's my badge. Fishing code is kindness. First one of the morning. It's a good start for me. I'll give you again, 14 and a quarter. All right, we'll get the release. Get the release. Not a bad one, the biggest perch I've caught in a little while. There he goes. All right, not a bad start. This is the metallic sardine. I actually really like this color for perch. Um, and uh, if you want to get one of your own, there's a promo code, diehard. I'll leave a link and I'll talk about more, but I want to get back to fishing really quick here. I'm supposed to be three guys out here this morning. I'm supposed to be Taku, Nick, and Ish. None of them are here yet. So maybe I'll get some fish before they even show up. If you watch the practice video, I said that I think it's gonna take about 15 inches, or no, sorry, 45 inches in order to win this tournament. Three fish average, or three fish total, which is about a 15 inch average. So 14, not quite there yet, but I think that's a good start. I think last year, the winner was like 42 inches. 42 and a half or something like that. So, I mean, 14 and a quarter, that's right on track. If I catch three 14 and a quarter inch fish, that puts me at 42 and three quarters. So I think that'll put me in good, put us in good contention, I should say, the team team event. That's easier said than done. So we gotta get back in there and see if we can get another one before the sun comes up. Number two, fish number two. Uh, this one, I think this one's a little smaller. And striper. Wow. Striper in a perch like tournament, dude. This is number two already. Striper? No, perch. All right, well, 
striper not a, not exactly what we're looking for but these are out here too happy to get them first ocean striper i've caught in a while probably about 16 inches i guess not for the tournament though see you later dude wow this water is really clear today oh, what's the keyword kindness kindness yeah I think. We're gonna double check that. Lisa, there's measuring tape zero all the way to the end. Want to make sure I said the right code there. I'm starting to second guess myself. So tempting to switch over to sand crabs. You'll definitely catch more fish with sand crabs, but this is like a big fish bait. You're not gonna catch very many fish under 11 inches with this bait. Okay, well, I think the initial flurry of the morning bite is now kinda closing, so talk to the camera a little bit. So today we're fishing in a surf perch fishing tournament, a team tournament. So myself and Ishwith Fish were on a team today. So the rules to the tournament are pretty simple. It's two people per team, and it's the total cumulative inches of your three biggest surf perch with 11 inches being the minimum that you can enter uh, into the tournament. So right now we're sitting at 14 and a quarter. That's my biggest surf perch so far. Nick and Taku are also on the team competing against us, but also kind of with us, I don't know, root for each other. But anyways, they have, I think one 12 inch fish right now. Um, so that's the situation so far. We've been fishing for a couple hours here this morning. I've been throwing the Kalisa through a sand crab for a little bit, got some smaller fish. And I think I'm gonna go back to the sand crab here now, but. And then I also wanted to announce that this is the beginning of a longer series. So today is, I believe December 13th is the day I'm posting this. And today is the start of 12 straight days I'm gonna be posting videos. And each day is gonna be a different video with a different species of fish caught. All caught in California waters. Our buddy there. Um, all caught within California waters and most of them from the kayak. Today we're fishing from shore. I think I might have a couple other videos coming from shore. But all within California. So last year I did a 12 video series. I think I called it the 12 days of DHF. This is like the second episode or second season of the 12 days of DHF. Today or this time hopefully I can do uh, a little bit better. Last time I wanted to do some di more different kinds of fishing, but the weather was just terrible. It didn't cooperate with me. So this time I've filmed a couple of videos in advance, but all of them, except for one, I think were within the last month. So, um, yeah, I'll be coming to you very, very soon. So yeah, this is video number one. Obviously today is the surf perch edition. Oh, <laughs> almost ate it. Check it out, guys. Huge! Not huge enough. It's a good start. So anyways, tournament is afoot. Should probably get back in the water. Need to show these guys how to catch some big perch. Another small one now. Need bigger. Small, too small. So if you weed through enough of those, eventually you'll find yourself a keeper, but who knows how many I'll have to catch before you get a bigger one. But if you're looking for action, Sand crab is guaranteed the way to go. Small. Small. A little bit bigger, but still small. We're getting in the right direction, but still not 11 inches. Probably like nine or 10. Alright, enough messing around with the sand crab. Back to Kalisa. 
Good news guys, so Ish, my partner, caught a 13 incher. I didn't know because he was fishing down the beach a little ways, but anyway, that brings us to 27 and a quarter so far, which is pretty good, I think. One more, like, if we can get a kicker, like a 16 incher, which I think is very possible. That'll put us at 43 inches, over 43 inches, which I think would be a pretty good total. That'll definitely put us in contention. Even with a smaller one, like another 14 incher, that puts us over 40 inches. I think we'll have a shot. We'll at least be in contention. I think, honestly, I think to win, I think 45 is like the magic number, but we'll see. I think I just had a bite here. Use the net, man. What? Use the net. I have, we have one too. You gotta use the net. I use We have a, I have a net up there too. Yeah. that's a nice rock. There we go. It's been caught before too. Look at all like oh my messed up. Oh. Anyway, this is number two for me. Ish has one ready. Here's my badge, measuring tape, zero, all the way to the end of 15 right there. Keyword kindness, badge. I think that's it. Now we just gotta get the release. I got you, Mongoose, dude. Here's the release. This big. Big mama. Boom, baby! What is that? 15, 14 and a quarter, and 13. Oh, Matt, it's so hard right now. 42. Unbelievable. Hold on. June has this upload deal here, so I'm going to add my file. From the f oh, I didn't record it. Just kidding. It's right there. Add. So these fish, if you notice, it has a little bit of a gray, a little bit of gray on the bottom. And these fish will get that, um, that coloration during the winter time when it's spawning season. So this is just the beginning. It's right now the beginning of December. They start spawning kind of early spring, I think. Maybe like February, March, usually. I don't know, sometimes I see pregnant fish at different times of the year, but anyways, usually during the winter, you'll see them with that little bit of gray on the bottom of the fish. So we just stopped to get lunch and uh, take a little rest, charge my cameras, but we're back out here for the afternoon session. And this time I only brought the Kalisa. I think now that we have a good solid limit in there, we have a 13 inch, a 14 and a quarter, and a 15 inch. And so now that we have those in there, I think we got to go for something big. Obviously, under 13 doesn't help us. And uh, I want to get, if we could get a 15 or a 16 or even bigger, that would be ideal. But uh, yeah, anything over 13, I guess, is good now. We can start calling up. But uh, yeah, that's the plan. It's about, I think, 1.30, 2 o'clock now. So we have a few more hours of daylight. Let's see if we can upgrade. 
Yeah. I'll walk back with you. Okay. I'll save Luke then for another Yeah. There we go. There's one. I don't know how big it is. It doesn't feel that big, but I don't know, it's hard to tell. Dogs running by. Yeah, not that big. Let's see, is this one 11 inches? I don't know, I don't think so. Let's measure them anyways, just for just for fun. Well, he is 11. All right, we'll measure him. So the reason I'm videotaping now and I'm gonna submit it is not to improve our total. So our total right now, we already have 42 and a quarter with our shortest one being 13 inches. So anything below 13 inches is not gonna help our total. But if there happens to be a tie of some sort, so if two people end up with 42 and a quarter, then the tiebreaker is how many qualifiable fish you enter into the tournament. So that'll be our fourth quali qualifiable fish, meaning perch over 11 inches for the tournament. Um, I'd say the chances of a tie are fairly low, but there is a chance nonetheless, so I don't think it hurts to put that one in there. This stick. This is a legit stick. Here we go. There's one. There's a fish. Does it feel huge? Oh, not bad. Maybe a little bit bigger than the last one. All right, another tiebreaker fish. Once again, Darren fishing. My first male fish. You can see it's got the fin there, but anyways, zero to 12, right into tip of 12 right there. All right, Kalisa is not doing too bad. We actually put down pretty good numbers for today. I was telling Nick earlier today, like two or three is usually a pretty good day for me on the Kalisa, unless you have that secret honey hole where there's a lot of big ones. It's tough to get a few to bite and I actually caught four perch and a striper today all on this Kalisa, so. Not a bad day for me. We definitely put in a good effort today and we were definitely rewarded as well. We got five fish total. Our biggest three totaling 42 and a quarter inches. Not too bad, I would say. We fished all the way, or at least I did. I fished all the way from sunset or sunrise to sunset. All right, just got off the live stream update. So we're officially in first place after day one, but it's just day one. I think a lot of people, a lot more people are gonna be fishing on the weekend, but we're in first place. We have 42.25 inches, second place, 40 inches. And I think third place is 39 inches as of day one. So. We'll see you guys out there bright and early tomorrow morning for day two. All right, 7 a.m. of this tournament. I've actually almost didn't make it out here. I've been up since like four o'clock. It's a long story. It's been a long morning. I'll catch you guys up later, maybe at the end of this video. But anyways, we're going to get to fishing now. So if I could catch one more 15-incher, I'll feel really good about our chances if I catch a you know, like a 14, somewhere in the 14 to 15 range, and 
it'll be a good improvement for us. I think we'll still have a solid chance. But really, I want to get one more 15-incher if I can this morning. Or bigger. There's definitely some bigger fish out there. Not very many, but if you get lucky, you could get a big one. So, anyways, let's head out to the beach now. All right. So, this morning, I told you it's been a long morning, but I forgot my shorts. I just have these, uh, what do you call these? Sweatpants. Not the ideal situation, but whatever. We're out here now. Oh man, the long morning continues. Uh, it's looking like it's gonna be a skunk for me this morning. All right guys, I didn't fish too much today. Did put in a couple hours this morning, but the final tally for today, the second and third place, and actually everyone below us, definitely improved their bag. So we're falling behind. We're actually in second place now um, with the tiebreaker. So our total count is 42 and a quarter inches, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, and someone else also has 42 and a quarter inches, but they have more fish weighed in total. So they're winning the tiebreaker right now. So tomorrow morning, we're going to head out and see if we can break the tie and win straight up because they have so many more fish weighed in than us. I don't think we're going to be able to surpass the tiebreaker. So I think our best chance is to catch some bigger fish. Do you have anything to say for our championship Sunday? Hey, let's save the best for last. I know a lot of people are at home watching football, but we're out here trying to catch football. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like that. All right. Yeah, well, there's that? a time when uh, I beat the YouTubers by an eighth of an inch, and it's time to beat the rest of the the rest of the normies uh, by eighth of an inch. I think we got this. Nice. All right. Good luck, man. All right. Yeah, you too. I'll let you know how it goes. All right, man. All right, go get him. Good luck. Still have a sleep, but it's championship Sunday. Let's go get him. All right, we have arrived. This is what dreams are made of. Championship Sunday. It's a tie ball game. It's basically gonna come down if I can catch a big fish or not. I told Ish. I think if we catch a 14-incher, we have a chance. 15-incher, we have a solid chance. And a 16-incher, we have a really good chance. So, that's all we're after here today. This is what dreams are made of, though. Literally, it's gonna come down to if I can catch a fish today. One day, one fish to bring home the championship. There we go. There's one. There's one. Feels like a solid one. I think this is going to help the cause. Come on. Oh, maybe not. All right, fish number one for day three. It is right at about there's a zero. Right at 11 and a quarter, maybe. Just a tiebreaker fish. There we go. All right, there's fish number one. Oh my God, that was a good one. Dang it. Oh, that was a good bite. That felt like a big one. Here we go. That uh, feels like a smaller one. Oh, it came off. I think that was a smaller fish. Oh, another bite. Dude, these fish are loaded in here right now. It's like three bites and four casts. There we go. Oh my god, it came off again! No! There we go. There's one. Oh, it came off again! Oh my god. Uh, what is that, like five? I'm gonna run out of batter memory card space with all these missed strikes. 
There we go. Stay on there. Stay on there. Oh my god, why do they keep coming off? I don't understand it. All the barbs are there. That's like six in a row. Alright, let's go. Make it a move. I'm sprinting to the spot. Well, not sprinting. Like a very fast jog to the spot. This is crunch time, baby. We gotta get one right here, right now. Oh, there's one. Uh, I think this is gonna be a small one. Yeah, too small. But at least we know there's fish here now. Oh, there we go. Uh, oh, look at that. <laughs> nice. That's a calico perch right there. This one, unfortunately, not going to be good for the tournament, but second species, I guess. Don't catch these as often as the barred. Barred are definitely more common. Uh, all right, time to make another move. Too many small fish here. All right, guys, so to update, 12.45, I'm back at the beach where I started this whole tournament, where we caught all three of our biggest fish, the two that I caught in Ish's one back on day one. Uh, this is the beach where we caught them, so we're gonna see if I can find at least one more here to uh, improve our limit. Last I checked on the leaderboard, everything is still the same between you know the top two players, so we're still not in first place. We're in second place with tiebreaker, but any improvement of any of our three fish, so anything over 13 inches will improve our bag and should propel us up the leaderboard. So I really still wanna get one big one, but anything over 13 inches, every quarter of an inch is huge. So we'll see if we can go get one right now. All my camera batteries are actually dead, all the GoPro batteries, so I'm charging them right now. So I'm gonna cast a little bit without the GoPro. Um, but yeah, if I catch one, bust out the camera and show you guys. All right, well, I'll take a little break from fishing to share with you guys a little story. So I mentioned yesterday that I had a long morning. Well, I was sleeping, I was planning to get up early to go fishing, but at four o'clock, which is way earlier than I was planning to get up, I thought I, you know, I was sleeping in my bed, I thought I heard some footsteps outside my front door. And I don't know, didn't think much of it for it took me a couple of minutes to like realize what happened. And then finally I was like, wait, that doesn't seem right. Why is someone at our front door at 4 a.m.? So I got up and looked out the window and I think I saw someone walking off outside our front door, just like, just out of sight. Um, so then I kind of got up, went and looked out our front porch and I realized that I had a couple things that were missing from my front porch. One of them was the motor for my kayak in my old town, and the second was my wetsuit, the wetsuit that I really use. I was drying both of those on our front porch, because um, after you go saltwater kayak fishing, everything, you gotta wash everything off. So I was just letting those dry outside our porch, and I um, noticed those are missing. So I thought, hmm, did I move those, put them somewhere else? Um, so I quickly put on some clothes and double checked you know, my car, some other places where I normally keep all my stuff. And no, they weren't there. So I'm, at that point, I was pretty sure someone came and swiped them. Luckily, I didn't find this out till later, but luckily, my very generous and also master of the grill neighbor has some surveillance footage. He has some surveillance cameras that can kind of see towards the front of our porch. So I called him up the next day and hit him up and said, hey, can you check your surveillance footage to see if you picked up anything last night? I think so they might have been taken off my front porch. And he did. So here's the footage.
walking out in front of our my porch area with a wetsuit in hand and maybe some other things I couldn't really tell, but no motor. So that was a little interesting. So at that point, I'm pretty sure that's the guy who grabbed their stuff and I don't know why the motor wasn't in the, in the shot, but you can see him taking the uh, wetsuit. And actually, if you look really closely, at one point he's standing there looking at the wetsuit, trying to figure out what it is that he's actually just stolen. And uh, you can see him take out the hanger and put it on the ground. And then later that morning, my neighbor went out um, and went and go found the hanger. So that pretty much confirmed to me that that was the wetsuit and that was the guy. So we go back to the, at night, 4.03, you see the guy walking off of, uh, the frame from the, from the cam, from the security camera. So after that, there's no sign of him. Who knows where he went? But seven minutes later, you see me coming to this screen, and that's because I actually went out after I put up away a few things that were also my porch that the guy didn't take for whatever reason, and then double checked my car to see if everything was in there. It wasn't. And then just kind of started surveying the scene to see if what, what was going on, try and see if there's any sign of any, any burglars. Because um, at that time, I didn't know if there was surveillance footage or not, but at that time, I was pretty sure someone, someone stole something. So I wanted to see if they would come back or whatever would do this. So I actually wandered around for like an hour trying to figure out what just happened. You know, I mean, mind you, this is from 4 to 5 a.m., so I'm still kind of half asleep. And then finally, at 5, like 5.15 or 5 o'clock, I don't really remember, I finally gave up and just went back inside and kind of sat down. I didn't go back to bed. At that point, I was so awake. Uh, I didn't think that I was gonna be able to sleep, so I didn't even try to go back to bed. I just kind of sat down and kind of thought about what, what my next course of actions were. I didn't really do much. I emailed my neighbor, because that's when I realized, oh, my neighbor has these security cameras, maybe you'll fix them. So I sent him an email and just kind of sat around. And then actually just went fishing, because I figured, well, I'm already up. If someone stole something, there's, they're probably not gonna come back by now. It's like an hour or two later. Um, so yeah, I thought, it's pretty much a done deal. Not much else I can do, so might as well just go fishing. So that's when I went fishing yesterday morning, like you guys saw. Unfortunately, I didn't catch anything. But um, well, after fishing, I went home. I think it was somewhere around 10. And then um, we had this family lunch. So I went up to San Francisco, actually, to go meet some family and friends. Um, did all that. Got home at like 3 o'clock. And then at that time, at 3 o'clock, I was kind of walking. I took Olaf out, was walking him, and then uh, my neighbors were outside at the same time, um, and I was just, you know, we were just playing with the neighbors. Olaf, our neighbors had some little girls, and Olaf had some little girls. So, anyways, we were playing like tag with Olaf, running around the front area. And lo and behold, as we're running around, I look into the bushes outside my front or my back porch, and there it is. There is my kayak motor, um, and also. So of my, uh, I had a bag with some crab trap stuff. I didn't even realize that that was gone at the time. But uh, there it was just sitting right out there behind my uh, back porch. So that's pretty much what connected all the dots for me. You know, I was happy that the motor was there. I was able to recover that as well as my uh, crabbing gear. But um, that, that explains why the footage, you can see the guy carrying off the wetsuit, but there's no, you can't see the motor. When I mean, the motor is big, you would see it on the security footage, even though it's not that great quality, um, and it's nighttime, you would be able to see somebody carrying off that thing. It's pretty big well. so, so, in hindsight, I mean, it still sucks that the, the wetsuit got stolen, but I guess it's not as bad as I originally thought uh, to replace the whole kayak motor. So, it was a long day yesterday. I got kind of lucky to find all that stuff, because I think, I, I'm no criminal, but um, I feel like that thief was playing to come back and get the motor, which is why he hit it back in there. It was probably too heavy for him to carry out at the time. Maybe he was gonna hide it in there and come back the next evening, next night and get it. Who knows? Last night, I kind of slept with one eye open. No one ever came to our front porch, didn't see anyone. I didn't get the best sleep, but uh, yeah, nothing happened last night, so anyways. That's what I was referring to yesterday when I said I had a long morning. I was up since 4 a.m. But, um, but anyways, maybe we'll get recuperate some funds with the uh, victory or place of this surf perch tournament. So let's get back to fishing. We still have one more fish that I need to catch in order to put us in contention for 
first place. Who knows what other people are catching? But at least to get us some attention. So let's get back out there. Really good bites, but didn't stick either one. And then I've been throwing the same craft for the last maybe half an hour. I got one more that was 11 and three quarter inches, so it's a submittable fish, but not gonna improve our top three. Um, so I'm gonna keep throwing the same crabs for maybe another hour, 30 minutes. See if I can pile up a few more weighable fish, maybe get lucky with a big one. All right, guys, I think we've got a good one here. Sorry, I didn't get the strike. The GoPro batteries are all dying here. But we're sticking out, we're putting in the hours. Oh yeah, this looks, oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's it. That's the one. That's the one we're looking for right there. Okay, we gotta quickly measure it. Do the submission and release. All right, that's a good fish though. All right, this is the one I've been looking for. There's the fish. Here's my badge. Keyword being gratitude. So if we zoom in, mouth on the zero, all the way down, 13 and a half. Zip back out here. Here's the fish. All right, let's get the release. Oh, yeah. Not much, but every half inch counts. Big female. There he goes. Boom, baby! Last cast. Official last cast. Alright, guys. 42.75. We'll see if it holds up. All right, guys. Well, exciting finish here. So, just to update you guys, when I left the beach on Championship Sunday, I thought maybe we had a chance. Um, we did improve our bag a half an inch, which if the other team didn't catch anything, we would have improved to first place and potentially won the tournament. But I soon realized on my way home that those guys fish way harder than probably anybody else in the tournament. And they think they weighed in like 10 fish, maybe even more on the final day, including two 15 inchers. I think another that was like 14.7 size. 14.75 so they just like blew us out of the water um, and we did end up in second place so not a bad showing last year I ended up in third place this year Ish and I we ended up in second place so we haven't broke that first place barrier yet but um, you know still a good showing for us some of that prize money will go to replacing my farmer John wetsuit that unfortunately I don't have anymore but uh, yeah long story short Unfortunate that things got stolen, but fortunate that I was able to find some of it and get some of it back. And also wanted to give a few shout outs. One, thank you to More Than Fishing for organizing this whole tournament. This whole team event was, um, you know, a fun new experience. It's a little bit different than the previous tournaments that we've had. Um, there's been surf perch tournaments, obviously, there's been striped bass tournaments. Actually, we just had one that I caught a striper in, and that was really fun. But this time it was a team event, so it was fun to. You know, talk back and forth with Ish. We were kind of strategizing almost every day. And then um, also at the end of every day, there was a live video where all the competitors were welcome to join. So it was fun to talk to everyone else and kind of talk some friendly trash and just kind of see how everyone's doing. Um, so shout out to Ish for being my partner. And a final shout out to my wife for letting me fish five days in a row, two days pre-fishing and then three days during the tournament. Even though I didn't fish the full days, you know, I at least attempted some fishing um, for a part of all five of those days. So shout out to her for letting me go. And finally, if you guys see a Farmer John wetsuit on Craigslist and it looks like it might have some old dried up scales on the legs, might know where it came from. Hit me up. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next one.